In the wilderness, ancient people could have muscles as strong as steel, stride over ten feet, chase deer in the forest, fish in the sea, and shoot eagles with guns. Under the current advanced technology, we overly rely on technology and our physical condition is deteriorating. We not only need to ask, is society progressing, but what about humanity? Is it progress or? No matter how vast and mysterious the universe is, it can also be attributed to the yin and yang of humans. No matter how unpredictable nature may be, it can also be attributed to the five elements of human beings. Who would know how much mysterious power is hidden within our small human body? Who can truly excavate the initial power of humanity? Let's temporarily set aside the constraints of technology and come to an era where only human power belongs, to experience the true power of humanity p.s. This book is purely fictional, and if there are any similarities, I would be honored keywords of the novel. Tong Tian Body Without Pop-Ups, download the complete set of Tong Tian Body TXT, and read the latest chapters of Tong Tian Body. Chapter 1. Death Crossing. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Death Crossing This story is purely fictional, please do not imitate it under the setting sun of blood, in the ancient and desolate desert, tens of thousands of small sand dunes are like graves burying history, desolate and lonely, and mysterious with vicissitudes of life. A gust of fierce wind swept by, howling with anger, as if weeping for the departed, and as if singing praises to the heroes of the past. Amidst the howls, yellow sand covered the sky, blocking the sun, with a great momentum that was about to peel off a layer of the earth's surface. A foreign object was swept by the howling wind and kept rolling on the sand. After a long time, the wind calmed down and the object stopped rolling. At first glance, it turned out to be a skull, with a pair of dark eyes resembling the gates of hell, seemingly emitting an endless aura of death, covering the once mysterious and ever dot changing desert with a layer of mosquito nets. In no time, the setting sun was setting, and in the desolate desert, the sand dunes were as quiet and eerie as the sleeping beasts. The cold night wind blew, and the sand particles on the dunes stirred slightly, as if these sleeping beasts were about to wake up. The atmosphere was chilling. Suddenly, a loud roar echoed throughout the lonely desert, and the quiet air seemed to shiver with fear. Looking for the sound, I saw a hand extending from inside a sand dune, and five fingers constantly bending and extending, seemingly carrying the weight of millions of years of space, perhaps like the resentment of thousands of lonely souls and ghosts, eerie and eerie. However, strangely enough, this hand is no different from a normal person's hand, not the dense white bones or bloody ghost hand we see in TV movies. However, at this moment, the sudden appearance of this hand is enough to scare people to death. Is it possible that there is a living person buried in this sand dune? Or was it a fake corpse? Hands vigorously swayed, and the sand on the sand dunes kept rolling down. The heavy and eerie atmosphere seemed to be about to find a breakthrough point, the earth seemed to tremble, and the air seemed to be flowing horizontally. The sand particles rolled and slid down faster, and with a loud bang, a head with short hair suddenly emerged, as if breaking the cursed seal that had been sealed for thousands of years, or crossing the gravity of time and space for thousands of years. Hooking This newly unearthed guy greedily breathed in the air outside, seemingly sleeping for thousands of years. However, his eyes full of knowledge and civilization instantly turned into confusion. Sha sha sha. As his body wriggled, the sand particles quickly rolled down, and in the blink of an eye, he crawled out. He was actually wearing a white sportswear, but strangely, it looked so uneven on him at this moment, after all, a large part of his hands and feet were exposed outside. But it seems that this sportswear is just a medium size for a person around 1.7 meters tall, while he is over 1.9 meters tall. So many places have been cracked, especially the shoes under his feet, which have no soles, and the logo of the Double Star brand can be vaguely seen. Inside the tattered clothes, the strong muscles of his body are like steel. However, he did not notice his change, only because of the completely unfamiliar and eerie environment around him, he had to turn and look around, 
but only felt the endless and chaotic sand dunes dragging long shadows like beasts rushing towards him. Suddenly, a strange feeling surged in my heart. It was like a person who was originally sleeping in their own bed, suddenly woke up at night, and was shocked to find themselves in a huge cemetery. That kind of terrifying, that kind of loneliness, that kind of despair, how could it be so terrifying? A terrifying and eerie aura instantly spread throughout every cell of his body, causing him to shiver uncontrollably. It was a tremor from the depths of his soul, and then his scalp began to tingle while reading. History, and then goosebumps began to appear all over. What is this place? How could I be here? The tall man who had just been unearthed looked at the unfamiliar environment around him in confusion and exclaimed in fear. At the same time, he opened a door to memories in his mind. His name is Yi Lang, nicknamed Night Wolf. He was originally a mountain village teacher who had just left university to teach in the mountainous area for less than two years. This time, he was invited by the university class monitor Zhou Ning to attend a reunion in Yunnan. Yi Lang didn't want to come, but his staunch college friend Gu Fan was coming, and he happened to be gathering with this staunch friend whom he hadn't seen in two years. Yi Lang remembers very clearly. At that time, Thirty classmates were taking photos in the Niga stone forest, climbing and standing on the stone to gaze. He and his brother Gu Fan had just climbed a stone mountain, and Yi Lang vividly remembered the moment when his footsteps stepped on the edge of the stone, everything around him seemed to be at a standstill. The wind stopped, and the laughter of the students below subsided. What's even more eerie is that all the movements of the students were frozen. The climbing students are still hanging from the stones, the jumping students are still maintaining a mid-stomach posture, and the photography students are still maintaining a stiff smile everything seemed to have been cursed by sun dashing, with a strange and mysterious atmosphere. However, Yi Lang was also shocked to find that he was not unable to move, and later on, he himself did not remember. Just as Yi Lang was desperately reminiscing, suddenly there was a loud bang coming from the high sand dune on his right. Yi Lang jumped up like a frightened rabbit, his three souls almost scared out of his body, and his seven souls almost scared away. He frantically picked up something on the ground, his pupils tightened, and he looked at the sand dune far away from him with all his guard. Yi Lang made up his mind to smash everything in his hand as soon as possible, no matter what was inside. Sure enough, just like the process he had just unearthed, first one hand broke out of the sand dune, and as the sand and dust surged and rolled down, a black spherical object slowly emerged from inside. Yi Lang seemed to see a terrifying corpse crawling out of the sand dune, opening its mouth with a foul-smelling corpse odor and even maggot infestation, rushing towards him. The scenes from the horror movie were like flipping through a book in his mind. He dared not wait any longer and suddenly smashed the object in his hand, hitting the black spherical object in the center. A muffled sound came from under the sand dune, and the hand that had broken through the ground trembled violently and in pain. It was obvious that the owner of the hand was in great pain, but he had to desperately climb outward. However, Yi Lang struggled to search for anything else to throw in the sand. He grabbed several unidentified objects and threw them at the soon-to-be unearthed monster, causing its hands to tremble with pain. In a blink of an eye, Yi Lang was shocked to find that the unknown object in his hand was actually a skull. He was so frightened that he threw the skull out of his hand in a panic like seeing a plague god. He then sat down on the ground, staring in horror at the monster still crawling outward in the sand dune. Finally, the people inside the sand dune crawled out and heard him curse loudly, which bastard threw me away. Yi Lang was taken aback for a moment. The voice sounded so familiar. Upon closer inspection, wasn't that his good brother Gu Fan. At this moment, he was rolling down from the sand dune, losing all his meat and vegetables. He shook his head vigorously and sprayed the yellow sand in his mouth. Yi Lang was overjoyed in his heart. In this desolate desert, he finally found a companion, who was also his good brother. This feeling can be imagined. He stood up and waved his hand excitedly, shouting, Avan, Avan. At first glance, 
Gu Fan also heard the voice of Yi Lang and forgot about the pain on his body. The two quickly met and embraced each other like a long-lost couple. After the joy of reunion, Gu Fan was awakened by the pain from several large bags on his head. Didn't you hit me just now? Gu Fan touched the egg-sized bag on his head and asked tentatively. Yi Lang smiled helplessly and said, Sorry brother, I thought you were. He he. It seems like it's only worth it this time, Gu Fan said dejectedly, as he turned around to take a look. He realized the situation in front of him and curiously said, Hey, Night Wolf, it seems like this isn't Yunnan Stone Forest, right? At this moment, the crescent moon hangs in the air, casting a bleak moonlight into the sand dunes, accompanied by gusts of gloomy wind, making it appear eerie and gloomy. With Gu Fan by his side, Yi Lang completely cleared away a small amount of fear in his heart. He was originally a brave person, after all, he had lived in the mountainous area for two years and walked a lot at night. If it weren't for this, he might have been scared out just now. I feel like this is a battlefield. Yi Lang unearthed earlier than Gu Fan, and he also looked at the surrounding environment several times, even more so than the skull he just picked up from the ground, which is why he made this judgment. Battlefield. Gu Fan glared, his tone mixed with questioning and confusion, and even a hint of excitement. Take a look at these on the ground. Yi Lang lowered his head and scanned the skull on the ground. Under the dim moonlight, hundreds or even thousands of skeletons emerged from the sand, varying in size and lying in different postures. However, from the deep black eye hole, a strange aura emanated from every one. Gu Fan was naturally brave, and he even bent down to pick up one. He played with it in his hand for a while and said seriously, it's real, not plaster. He casually threw the skull in his hand and said excitedly, Night Wolf, haven't you ever thought that we might have come to another world, just like a time travel in a novel? Perhaps there will be many adventures waiting for us in the future. Look, you may no longer have to stay in that place where birds don't lay eggs to teach. All the unfairness in society will disappear, let those so dot called relationship holders go to hell. Regarding Gu Fan's words, Yi Lang usually agrees very much. After all, he often complains about this unfair society. When he was first placed in the public recruitment exam, he was assigned to the most remote mountainous area because it was okay. He has complained and cursed this society more than once. However, at this moment he didn't dare to agree. Look at the environment around you, even if we come to another world, whether we can survive and leave this desert is still a problem. This, just as Gu Fan felt his head and thought foolishly, he suddenly heard a, wow, in the lonely desert, which was like a bolt from the blue. At the same time, they shivered coldly, looked at each other, looked for the reputation, and saw a hand coming out of a sand dune five meters away from the right, just like the way the two of them unearthed. Despite this, the two of them remained fully alert and didn't dare to be careless. Gu Fan picked up two skeletons from the ground, just like Yi Lang's initial movements. The owner of the hand in the sand dune struggled to crawl outward, and the sand particles kept surging on the sand dune. Someone was about to be unearthed, but he didn't know if it was a person or not. Just as the owner of this hand was about to reveal the true face of Mount Lu, suddenly, dozens of loud noises rang out from the surrounding sand dunes, one hand after another breaking through the soil. For a moment, this vast desert felt like a hundred ghosts out of hell, and with the dim moonlight, the atmosphere became even more eerie and unusual. Especially, these hands kept scratching and tugging in the air, which made people think of the terrifying zombies in the Resident Evil, as if they were about to tear the living apart this article is read by the novel. Chapter 2 Extra People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Extra People Watching such a scene, Ren Yelong and Gu Fan, no matter how brave they were, couldn't help but stand upside down with cold hair and goosebumps all over their bodies. The two of them were tightly pressed back to back, constantly looking around. At this moment, they realized that they were standing in the center of these sand dunes. The sand particles on the surrounding sand dunes kept surging, 
and more and more hands broke through the soil, and the things inside were desperately drilling outward. Sometimes there was a muffled sound of, hmm, coming from within the sand dunes, but it was like a ghost roar from hell. Yi Lang and Gu Fan were back to back, eager to squeeze their bodies into their bodies. The terrifying and eerie atmosphere became increasingly solemn, and both of them almost simultaneously felt breathing difficulties without any breakthrough. At this moment, something inside the sand dune that was the first to show its hand crawled out, then rolled down from the dune. The eerie and solemn atmosphere had a breakthrough, and it suddenly calmed down. Yi Langu, under the dim moonlight, recognized the rolling down thing as class monitor Zhou Ning, who was also the initiator of this student union. The two of them hurriedly walked over, and Zhou Ning rolled down the sand dune seven or eight times in a row. Fortunately, he didn't feel dizzy at all, and suddenly stood up. His towering figure was nearly two meters, like a newly awakened demon god. In his tattered clothes, his strong muscles were as strong as steel. He miraculously grew nearly twenty centimeters taller like Yi Lang Gu Fan. Zhou Ning also recognized Yi Lang and Gu Fan at a glance as they walked by and said, Yi Lang and Gu Fan, it's you. How did you become like this? In Zhou Ning's eyes, Yi Lang and Gu Fan had nothing more than a few pieces of cloth left on their clothes. Fortunately, the elasticity of their underwear was good, otherwise key parts would have to be exposed. Of course, compared to the same period last year, he did not notice any changes in their bodies. Yi Lang and Gu Fan looked at each other with a bitter smile. You think your image is very shining, Gu Fan said unhappily. Zhou Ning lowered her head and saw that she was indeed no better than Yi Lang and the others, and even a little more embarrassed. However, this guy immediately calmed down and calmly looked around, hey, what's this place? Where are the others? At this moment, Yi Lang and Gu Fan had already thought that the things about to be unearthed in the other sand dunes might also be their classmates. Yi Lang said, they may still be in the sand dunes. Let's save them first. The three soldiers divided into three routes and pulled out the people inside the sand dune. As expected, all the people inside the sand dune were classmates who had been studying with them for four years. In no time, everyone was rescued. They were all ragged and disheveled, and some girls wearing tight-fitting clothes were even more miserable. The areas that needed to be exposed were revealed, and the areas that shouldn't be exposed were also faintly visible. However, at this moment, facing the eerie environment around us, no one has the mood to pay attention to these things. Shame and life seem so insignificant compared to each other. The girls gathered together, comforting each other. At this moment, there was more comparison, and everyone noticed their own changes. Six boys were all around 1.9 meters tall, with muscles as strong as steel, no less than NBA stars. And some girls who used to worry about losing weight all day and wanted to boost their confidence with high heels are now forcibly stretched by 10 centimeters, with a uniform and slim figure that should be convex and perky, very popular. The first occurrence of fortune and misfortune, fufu, misfortune brings blessings, and no one knows whether this change is a blessing or a curse. It seems that our bodies have been altered by some mysterious force, and we may even be transported to another world by this force, said Fong Jun, who is as fat as Mithraya Buddha and also known as the Buddha. This guy is a fan of novels, and now he has to associate these with some small theories, and this speculation coincides with Gu Fan's bold idea earlier. So we may not be on earth anymore, said the female class leader, Wen Xiaodai. This woman was known for her calm demeanor and ease of handling things in college, coupled with her good adaptability and ability to speak Mandarin. Most importantly, her image and temperament were quite good. Therefore, she often served as the host of some school parties and was also considered a somewhat famous figure in the school. Of course, such a woman with good conditions in all aspects was once the target of male class monitor Zhou Ning's pursuit. Both of them were class monitors. At that time, Zhou Ning even claimed to be the first to win the moon near the water, and was determined to catch up with Wen Xiaodai. 
Unfortunately, Wen Xiaodai never gave this guy a good face, except for his work cooperation. So, one or two months later, Zhou Ning had to retreat knowing the difficulties. Gu Fan said again, Buddha and I have the same idea, but it is still unclear whether we are still on earth or not. It could be in the past or in the future. What should we do? Can we still go back? My husband and son are still waiting for me. The chubby Lu Jing spoke excitedly. This woman got married as soon as she graduated from college, and she was still married as a child. Most of her classmates attended her wedding, and Yi Lang was also among them. Soon after, she heard that she had a child. Modern people always like to get on the car first and then buy tickets. Lu Jingqing, who has no job, is a typical housewife who spends her days at home doing laundry, cooking, and taking care of her children. She leads a happy life that others envy, but only she knows that this kind of life is extremely boring. I finally had the opportunity to come out and relax this time. I never expected such a thing to happen. My husband and children are still waiting for her. Can she not be in a hurry? Yi Lang, who had not spoken for a long time, spoke up and said, No matter what place this is, I don't know if we can go back, but what we must understand is that we are currently in a completely unfamiliar environment, and we don't know if there will be any danger in this place. We must make good arrangements to ensure everyone's safety. Only when dawn can we fully understand the surrounding environment. During his college years, Yi Lang served as a sports commissioner for four years, excelling in both physical strength and deployment. When he spoke, everyone responded, especially girls. In this unfamiliar environment, women need men's protection the most, even if they are not around them. No one noticed a cold gleam in Zhou Ning's eyes. This guy had superior conditions in all aspects, and due to his family background, he developed a proud and conceited temperament. No matter what he did, he wanted to be superior. In this situation, such words should have come from his mouth, but Yi Lang snatched his attention and gained everyone's trust. How could he not be angry? In addition, when he was in college, Yi Lang was low. Key and highly praised by his classmates. He also had good social connections, after all, there were too many children like Yi Lang who came from the countryside. Zhou Ning also knew that many classmates were convinced by Yi Lang but not by himself, but now he also couldn't get angry, especially with Gu Fan by Yi Lang's side. He was well aware that his body might be stronger than Yi Lang's, but he could definitely not compete with the joint efforts of Yi Lang and Gu Fan. He looked thoughtfully at Luo Yu and Zhang Lin next to him. Rodiu is a boastful king, but he is very timid, and this kind of person is easily threatened and exploited. Zhang Lin, with a sharp mouth and monkey like face, always flickers behind his glasses. He never dares to look others in the eye when speaking. He appears to be a cunning person, known for his greed for small gains, but this type of person is also the easiest to be bought. Zhou Ning, who has been working in the business world for two years, is quite scheming. He said calmly, Yi Lang is right. The most important thing now is to ensure the safety of your girls. We boys are as strong as cows, so there's no need to worry. Let's do this. We six boys, you twenty point four girls. I suggest that each of us six boys is responsible for the safety of four girls. Do you think it's okay? All the girls turned their eyes to the female class monitor when Xiaodai, and in the end, when Xiaodai nodded. This method is good. Firstly, it effectively distributes the power of the men, and secondly, it avoids pushing me when problems arise. As when Xiaodai agreed, Zhou Ning said again, Okay, you can choose for yourself. The premise is that a boy can only take care of four girls. If there are too many, I'm afraid you won't be able to take care of them when something happens. Quickly, the team was determined. The four members led by Yi Lang were the female class leader Wen Xiaodai, two literary and artistic commissioners Shan Bing and Wang Fang, and the chubby woman Lu Jing who had been a housewife for a year and was crying to go home. Watching Wen Xiaodai choose Yi Lang, 
it seemed that there were many girls who also wanted to follow Yi Lang Zhou Ning's eyes once again flickered with a cold light, and he didn't even care which of the four girls were following him. Yi Lang said again, it seems that tonight we will have to rest on the spot. All the girls are sitting in the middle, and we six boys are responsible for your safety outside. Yi Lang once again demonstrated his deployment ability. Wen Xiao Dai was the first to respond to Yi Lang's strategy and led other girls to gather in the middle. At this moment, there was another bang coming. Everyone was startled and turned around. Looking for the sound, they saw another hand emerge from a small sand dune over four meters high, five meters away. This hand is snow dot white and slender, especially the five pointed and long fingers, which seemed to twinkle with cold light under the dim moonlight. What's even more terrifying is the blood-red nails on the fingertips, which are thin and pointed, like the hands of a female ghost in a movie. At this moment, this hand seems to be pulling out from the chest of a living person, and each finger is dripping blood. Five fingers suddenly closed, and everyone seemed to have an illusion that this hand was grabbing towards their chest. Everyone took a deep breath of air, their hearts suddenly contracting, desperately trying to avoid the grab. At this moment, everyone dared not even take a breath, and all the girls pushed towards the boy they had just chosen. Thirty classmates, one not more, one not less, how could there suddenly be one more? Are people or ghosts under this sand dune? Under the dim moonlight, a sinister and terrifying aura permeated everywhere. These auras kept infiltrating the bodies of Yi Lang and others, taking root in their bodies and pushing fear to the extreme. This article is read by the novel. Chapter 3 Familiar Female Corpse You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 3 Familiar Female Corpse The white and miserable hand in the sand dune kept shaking, stretching and grabbing, and the atmosphere became more and more solemn. The girls were so scared that they leaned tightly together. Only when Xiao Dai, Dan Bing, and Wang Fang, who were slightly calmer, dared to stare at the hand without taking their eyes off. Under the dim moonlight, the sand particles on the sand dunes kept surging, like a giant beast swallowing its tongue. Obviously, the things inside the sand dunes were struggling violently, wanting to come out and breathe. Everyone felt a chill on their backs because this thing was about to be unearthed. Zhou Ning swallowed his saliva, moistened his dry throat, and said, Yi Lang, go up and take a look. Why me? Yi Lang was surprised by this. The other classmates also wondered why Zhou Ning was giving orders at this moment, perhaps because he was the class monitor during his college years. But this is not his college days, and Yi Lang can completely avoid dumping his debts. Gu Fan's eyes quickly twirled twice. He was already a genius, and at this moment, he immediately saw Zhou Ning's plan. He wanted to take the opportunity to eliminate Yi Lang, at least to make him suffer and spit out the bad breath that had just been snatched by Yi Lang. Zhou Ning said again, who made you the fastest among us boys? You only run 100 meters in 10 seconds. You're probably running faster now. For everyone's safety, you should go up and take a look. Even if there's any danger, you can run and we'll cover you from behind. The other classmates also knew that Yi Lang ran fast. At this moment, when Zhou Ning said this, everyone looked at Yi Lang. In the eyes of most people, the meaning was to let him go up, and only a few people had a hint of worry in their eyes. Yes, compared to their own lives, what kind of classmate friendship has become worthless at this moment? Looking at the situation, Zhou Ning gave a cold smile and didn't know why. The person in the sand dune didn't climb out for a long time. Under the scorching eyes of everyone, Yi Lang had to step forward. Gu Fan grabbed him and said, I'll go with you. What is a brother? It's the person who still holds on to you at critical moments. Boys Wen Xiao Dai also said, be careful. Yi Lang nodded at her and walked out with Gu Fan. Watching Wen Xiao Dai's concern for Yi Lang, Zhou Ning's teeth were itching with hatred. The woman she had been chasing for a month or two actually cared so much for Yi Lang, a mountain village teacher who was less than 1% of herself. 
At this moment, his hatred for Yi Lang grew even more. In the eyes of everyone, Yi Lang and Gu Fan walked side by side to the sand dune. The two of them glanced at each other before shifting their gaze to the fiercely gripping hand on the sand dune. It was unclear whether it was an illusion or not. At this moment, Yi Lang and Gu Fan both felt that their hand seemed to be struggling on the brink of death. Perhaps it could be said that the owner of this hand was struggling on the brink of death, just like a person buried alive in the sand with only one hand exposed. This was already their last breath in life, and that dying struggle may be more like waving to the grim reaper. Sure enough, the speed of the hands grabbing and shaking gradually slowed down. Finally, the five finger curls gathered into claws, with trembling farewell to the last strength in life. On the tiger's mouth of the hand that was about to be powerless to hang down, seven cinnabar moles arranged in the shape of the Big Dipper, small as needles, Meiji Lang's eyes suddenly widen. He pounced on the sand dune as if going crazy, frantically digging for the yellow sand with both hands. Gu Fan beside him couldn't understand why Yi Lang suddenly changed so much, and naturally, the people behind him didn't understand what was going on. Yi Lang was frantically digging while shouting, What are you waiting for? Come and help me quickly. Watching Yi Lang's eager expression, Gu Fan didn't ask a word and went up to help dig. After digging for a few minutes, he found a large stone slab beneath the surface of the yellow sand. There was a hole in the center of the slab, and this hand happened to have crawled out of it. Obviously, the owner of the hand was pressed under this large stone slab, no wonder he couldn't climb out after climbing for a long time. Yi Lang's actions also attracted other classmates, and when Xiao Dai asked on behalf of everyone, Yi Lang, what are you doing? Yi Lang seemed even more anxious, his hand movements incredibly fast. He shouted, don't ask so many questions, help dig together quickly. When Xiao Dai didn't say much and immediately stepped forward to join the excavation team. Following that, Wang Fang, Dan Bing, and other girls also joined in. Zhou Ning, Feng Jun, Zhang Lin, and Luo Yu, four big men, stood on the side, but were shouted by Wen Xiao Dai, Zhou Ning, are you still not men? Why don't you come up and help? Feng Jun, Zhang Lin, and Luo Yu glanced at each other and then at Zhou Ning, but still joined the excavation. Zhou Ning couldn't understand what he was doing, but still reluctantly started digging with everyone. A few minutes later, the entire sand dune was almost flattened, and a huge black stone coffin about three meters long, half a meter high, and one meter wide was presented in front of everyone. A pale hand extended from the center of the coffin lid, as if a zombie that had been sleeping for thousands of years was about to break through and emerge. The entire stone coffin emitted a mysterious and eerie aura. The girls hugged each other tightly, their faces turned pale from fear, biting their lower lips tightly in daring not to take a bite. However, Yi Lang did not stop. He placed his hands on the edge of the coffin lid and let out a loud roar, as if he wanted to lift it up. However, the heavy coffin lid remained motionless. Gu Fan walked silently to the other end of the sarcophagus to help his brothers without any reason. Immediately, when Xiao Dai joined in and led the other girls to come up and help. The heavy coffin lid was slowly removed, and there was no sand inside the sarcophagus. There was only a woman with white short-sleeved tight-fitting clothes on her upper body, light blue jeans under her, and a pair of white sports shoes. Her face was pale, and her features were slightly twisted with long hair. In theory, when the sarcophagus is opened and one looks at such a well-preserved female corpse, everyone will be frightened and even scream, but everyone around them will exclaim in surprise, Teacher Duanmu. This article is read by the novel. Chapter 4 A Different Narrative of the Past You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 A Different Narrative of the Past Unexpectedly, What Lies in This Sarcophagus is Duanmurang, a college counselor. Too many questions flood everyone's hearts. Why is Duanmarong here? Why are you lying in this stone coffin again? And who should have been lying inside this sarcophagus? Where is that person's skeleton? 
Too many questions, too many confusions are troubling everyone. Yi Lang and Gu Fan lifted Duan Morong out of the sarcophagus. At this moment, she was out of breath. Without hesitation, Yi Lang bent down to perform artificial respiration for Duan Morong. The classmates on the side watched anxiously, praying in their hearts. Fortunately, the time of lack of oxygen was not long, and she just entered a state of feigned death. Amidst everyone's prayers, Duan Morong suddenly opened her eyes and hugged Yi Lang, who was leaning down. She screamed heartily and relentlessly, scratching Yi Lang's face. Duan Murong was locked in a sarcophagus, with only darkness left. She frantically grabbed and tugged at it, calling the heavens not the earth, and the feeling of walking towards death step by step was only known to those who had experienced it firsthand. The fear was indescribable. When she regained consciousness at this moment, she still continued the fearful dream she had just had. The element of fear still occupied her soul, and she could only vent crazily. In an instant, Yi Lang's face was covered with more than ten deep scratches, blood dripping profusely. Gu Fan quickly hugged Duan Morong, only to be shocked to find that Duan Morong's strength was terrifying at the moment. With Gu Fan's now over 1.9 meters strong like a cow, she couldn't control her. At the same time, everyone noticed that Duan Morong didn't seem to have grown taller like everyone else, and she still had her previous figure of 1.7 meters. Duan Mu Rong kept scratching and twisting in Gu Fan's arms, and in the blink of an eye, he was reading on Gu Fan's body carrot net star. The ranking list also had a few scratches added. Helplessly, Yi Lang and Gu Fan had to work together to press her to the ground. Duan Mu Rong went crazy and roared loudly, her long hair messy like weeds. When Xiao Dai and others hurriedly stepped forward to help hold her down, while shouting, Duan Mu Teacher, Duan Mu Teacher, I am Wen Xiao Dai. Wake up, wake up. When Xiao Dai shouted more than ten times in a row, and Duan Mu Rong's eyes, which were infinitely enlarged and seemed to be about to detach from her eyeballs, slowly contracted. At the same time, she gradually calmed down. Finally, under the gaze of everyone, Duan Mu Rong's eyes gradually returned to normal. Yi Lang and Gu Fan still dared not easily let go of her. When Xiao Dai knew their intentions and immediately probed, Duan Mu teacher, do you still recognize me? Duan Mu Rong looked at Wen Xiao Dai with a somewhat floating gaze. The moment before, she went crazy and almost used all her strength. At this moment, she said weakly, Xiao Dai, it's you. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief as Duan Mu Rong could name Wen Xiao Dai. Only then did Yi Lang and Gu Fan release her with peace of mind and help her up. But as soon as Duan Morong stood up, she immediately felt something unusual. She looked around Yi Lang and others slightly, and then exclaimed in surprise, Little butterfly, Bing Bing, why have you all grown taller? Duan Mu Rong was a graduate student who graduated from Yi Lang and others in the sophomore year of the National People's Congress. She took over Yi Lang's class for two years. Due to her beautiful appearance and outgoing personality, she quickly integrated into the class and established deep friendships with several girls such as Wen Xiaodai. Of course, she is the dream lover of several boys in the class and even the entire college. However, due to her superior conditions, even Zhou Ning, a playboy who once wanted to experience the feeling of teacher-student relationship, had to shy away and feel ashamed of herself. However, at this moment, she appeared so petite in front of the suddenly rising Yi Lang and others, and the contrast was the strongest for her own feelings. When Xiao Dai said helplessly, we don't know how it got taller all of a sudden. We don't even know where this place is. By the way, Teacher Duan Mu, how did you get into this stone coffin? Duan Morong recalled, a few colleagues and I went on a trip to the stone forest in Yunnan. As soon as we arrived within the area of the ancient stone forest, we felt a darkness in front of us and knew nothing. Naigu Shirlin is the Shirlin area where Yi Lang and his companions were located at that time. Gu is the Sani language of the Yi ethnic group, which includes both ancient and black meanings. By the way, how did you get here again? Duan Morong immediately asked. 
When Xiao Dai said, we were originally in the Naigu stone forest, but we also felt like we didn't know anything when it turned black in front of us. Duan Murong regained her composure as a teacher, looked around, and calmly said, it seems that this is no longer Yunnan stone forest. Gu Fan said, we suspect that there is a magical force that has taken us to another world. Duan Murong sighed and said, I can't believe we haven't seen each other for two years. Meeting again would be in such a place. Everyone was deeply moved. A group of people sat in groups on the sand according to the plan that Yi Lang had just formulated. In this completely unfamiliar environment, teachers and students began to reminisce about the past in a different way this article is read by the novel. Chapter 5 Resurrected Skull You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Resurrected Skull The moon climbed over its highest point and began to fall. The darkness before dawn quickly spread, and elements of fear began to fission in everyone's hearts. The girls surrounded Duan Murong, Wen Shaodai, and others, obviously when they were leaders, while Yi Lang and the six others formed a circle outside to protect the ladies inside. Even so, it still couldn't stop the spread of fear elements. Everyone knew how terrifying silence was, so the girls all searched for topics to ask Duan Murong, or chatted with each other without a word, and no one wanted silence to come. Finally, the darkness before dawn arrived, so dark that they couldn't see their fingers. Everyone naturally reached for their phones in their pockets, but many people were already close to being naked, and their phones were already buried somewhere. Six boys still have their phones, but only ten girls still have their phones. Those who have phones are all switching the flashlight function on their phones, and for a moment, the desert welcomes an unnatural light. With the light, the girls breathed a sigh of relief again. It has been two years since graduation, and most of their classmates have started working. They are no longer as energetic as they were in college. If they want to sleep more late, they can sleep more late. They wake up naturally in the morning. No matter how many topics they have, there are moments of silence. As humans, we need to rest, especially in the moment before dawn, when we are most tired. The girls finally couldn't resist the laws of nature. You leaned on my back, I lay on your legs and fell asleep. They prayed to wake up and find themselves still lying in the warm bed at home, even in the stone forest. All of this was just a dream, and the nearby stone coffin still emitted an inexplicable strange smell. The early morning sunshine, mixed with a hint of scorching heat, awakened everyone and also awakened the unknown dangers in the desert. Looking at the endless yellow sand in front of me, I read truthfully. Internet girls are cruel, and they embrace each other, welcoming the first wave of morning breeze, rolling up layers of yellow sand, and the air suddenly becomes oppressive, dull, and dry. The skeletons buried under the yellow sand suddenly appeared, as if they had climbed up from the sand themselves. The girls were so scared that they covered their faces and shouted and jumped up. Yi Lang shouted, Don't be afraid, these are just some skeletons. As soon as Yi Lang finished speaking, everyone noticed that there were not only hundreds or thousands of skeletons lying under the yellow sand, even tens of thousands were not enough to describe them. Looking at the white bones, skeletons, and scattered weapons scattered everywhere on the yellow sand, the girls were even more frightened and their faces turned pale. It was true that everyone had spent the night lying on these skeletons, and the feeling of lingering fear made everyone feel layers of goosebumps. Standing on the sand covered with skeletons, the girls dared not move a step. Gu Fan walked up to Yi Lang and said, This is indeed a battlefield. Yi Lang nodded and said to Duan Murong, Teacher, we must leave here immediately to find the water source. Yi Lang was right in saying that everyone was suddenly brought into this unfamiliar environment. Not to mention food, even water didn't have a drop, and they could only last for two or three days at most. Where can we go? This endless desert, I'm afraid we're already thirsty before we even leave, said a timid girl. If we stay here, it's like waiting for death. If we persist for two or three days, perhaps we can find a water source, Gu Fan said. 
Duan Morong looked at the messy scratches on Yi Lang's face and felt an infinite sense of guilt in her heart. However, at this moment, she still said, Yi Lang Gu Fan is right. If we stay here, we will never have a chance. Classmates, as long as we unite, I believe we can definitely find a water source to get through this difficult time. Zhou Ning also said at this moment, the teacher is right, I am willing to explore ahead. This guy doesn't want to die here. Yi Lang also said, Gu Fan and I will postpone. At this moment, a girl standing outside suddenly shouted and jumped up in a frenzy. There was a loud noise as she pulled out a skeleton from under the yellow sand. No, to be precise, the hand of the skeleton grabbed her ankle, and as she jumped, it pulled the skeleton out of the ground. Ah! Ah! A few girls who were not far from that girl were suddenly scared out of their wits and squeezed into the girl group, while the other girls were all trembling with fear. Yi Lang stepped forward and shouted, Lu Ling, don't move. I'll help you retrieve it. However, Lu Ling, who was caught by the skeleton, couldn't hear her. She roared and dragged the skeleton wildly, stirring up the yellow sand and making it impossible for Yi Lang to get close to her. Finally, in Lu Ling's crazy leg swinging movement, the skeleton was thrown five or six meters away by her. She rushed towards the group of girls like a survivor, hugging any girl and crying loudly, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Suddenly, a few clicking sounds came from the skull lying on the ground, attracting everyone's attention. In dozens of pairs of extremely frightened eyes, it actually stood up slowly and stiffly, and the missing half of the skull shook mechanically, as if scanning Yi Lang and others. Ah! This article is read by the novel. Chapter 6 Snakes in Skeletons You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Snakes in Skeletons The girls screamed again, and the timid Luo Yu and Zhang Lin were also scared and leaned towards the girls. This skull has actually been resurrected. The skeleton, as if it could really be seen, walked towards Yi Lang standing at the front with mechanical steps. Even though Yi Lang was brave, he had never seen such a formation before. He was so scared that he took two steps back and happened to step on a rusty spear. He bent down and grabbed the spear, swept it with his backhand, and hit the skeleton's waist. With a loud bang, the skull collapsed and turned into a pile of messy white bones. The girls, who had been looking so grand that they dared not make a sound, just breathed a sigh of relief again. The sound of clicking kept coming out from the surrounding sand. Skeletons stood stiff from the ground one after another, and they were actually holding weapons in their hands. Yi Lang immediately realized something was wrong and shouted, everyone pick up the weapons on the ground and gather together. Immediately, he also took a step back and stood with the girls. Gu Fan, with quick eyes and quick hands, bent down to pick up a rusty big knife, Feng Jun picked up a long spear, Zhou Ning also picked up a heavy knife, while Zhang Lin and Luo Yu picked up a sword. The other girls also picked up the missing weapons under their feet. In an instant, hundreds of skeletons stood up and surrounded them. Six boys stood on the periphery, protecting the girls inside. Even though they had weapons in their hands, the timid Luo Yu and Zhang Lin were so frightened that their hands trembled uncontrollably. The two of them scanned the stiff skeleton in fear, constantly shrinking their bodies towards the girls. With such a formation, the girls were already too scared and weak to have the courage to fight. Through the skull circle, Yi Lang saw a huge sand dune about 300 meters ahead on the left, which was enough to withstand hundreds of weights. It might be much better to stand on it to defend. At the moment, he shouted loudly, Classmates, let's form a circle and move towards the huge sand dune ahead to the left. At least we won't be so passive on top of it. At present, everyone is surrounded by these suddenly awakened skeletons and has to fight for their own lives. Dang 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 dang, six boys standing on the periphery of Yilangu blocked the first wave of the skeleton's attack. Yilangu used a long spear, which could hold the widest range and was also the most difficult one. Fortunately, these skeletons move very mechanically, 
read a book. The chopping action was also very slow. Gu Fan and Zhou Ning made their way, while Yilang and Feng Jun were cut off. Zhang Lin and Luo Diyu guarded on both sides, and a group of people slowly moved towards the huge sand dune ahead to the left. Gu Fan chopped apart several skeletons with a few knives, and immediately exclaimed with some experience, slay their waists. Upon hearing Gu Fan's roar, everyone else followed suit. Sure enough, the waist of these skeletons was only supported by their spine, and once they broke, they would fall apart. In this way, a group of people moved faster and instantly advanced to a distance of less than 100 meters from the sand dune. Just as everyone was excited, suddenly a girl let out a desperate scream. I saw a strange black snake, two or three meters long and as thin as chopsticks, burrowing into her nostrils. Outside, a large part of the snake's body kept twisting and twisting. The girl immediately bled from all seven orifices and collapsed to the ground, while the strange black snake continued to burrow into her brain, making nauseating sounds of chewing. The girls were immediately frightened by this terrifying scene and shouted loudly, covering their heads and fleeing everywhere. The originally strong formation immediately collapsed. Yi Langu and others had no time to stop them. In an instant, five or six girls were dismembered by the surrounding skeletons and knives, and the air was immediately filled with a strong smell of blood. At this moment, Yi Lang was sweeping through a skull when he was shocked to find a strange black snake suddenly darting out of it and shooting straight at his nostrils. Fortunately, he reacted quickly and fired a sudden shot, hitting the guy to the ground. With a loud bang, he quickly slipped into the yellow sand and disappeared without a trace. Be careful everyone, this snake crawled out of the skull, Yi Lang reminded loudly. However, it was already too late by now. The strange snakes from the skeletons that had just been scattered had already crawled out. In an instant, about ten girls who had run out were entangled and rolled on the ground, screaming in fear. These strange snakes have amazing jumping power, entangled around a person's neck with just one leap, and their heads burrowed directly into their nostrils, making it impossible to defend themselves. In the blink of an eye, about ten girls were plunged into their brains and internal organs by these snakes, and died in pain. Six boys from Yilangu and Zhou Ning leaned tightly together, while Duan Murong shouted to pull back the girl who had not run far. In just one minute, along with Duan Murong, there were only ten girls left. Looking at my classmate who was still alive four years ago, now they have turned into cold corpses lying on the ground. Some of the strange snakes have burrowed into the nostrils of the corpses, some have burrowed into their mouths, and some have burrowed into their ears. Each corpse emitted a nauseating sound of chewing, indicating that these strange snakes were devouring their organs, flesh, and brain marrow. Suddenly, there were two crisp sounds. Two snakes simultaneously pierced through the eyeballs of a corpse and emerged from their holes. The snake's head, mixed with red and white, kept shaking and making a hissing sound, as if searching for the next target. Watching such a terrifying scene, the surviving girls were so frightened that they burst into tears. They screamed and jumped wildly in place, then crouched on the ground with their heads in their arms, trembling all over. Even Duan Muron was trembling all over, standing numb in the same place. These were all her students who had died. The feeling of watching her students die and being powerless was indescribable. However, at this moment, most of the strange snakes that emerged from the skeletons had burrowed into more than ten corpses. Yi Lang saw the opportunity and nodded at Gu Fan, who shouted, Get up quickly. Now is our chance to escape. However, these girls were all so frightened that they were completely powerless, and Yi Lang could only say, We each support one. Fortunately, Duan Mu Rong, Wen Xiaodai, Dan Bing, and Wang Fang can still walk on their own. More than ten people supported each other, but as soon as they started, the snakes and the remaining skeletons were startled and quickly caught up. These strange snakes were not like the skeletons, they swam very fast and caught up with Yi Lang and others in the blink of an eye. At this moment, Zhang Lin happened to be supporting the chubby Lu Jing, who fell behind the team. 
he turned his head and saw hundreds of black snakes chasing after him quickly. How could he manage Lu Jing? He threw her to the ground and charged forward as if he had died. In the blink of an eye, he surpassed Yi Lang in front of him. Yi Lang was suddenly startled and turned around to see Lu Jing lying on the sand like a meatball, desperately shouting, Help, help. Zhang Lin, you bastard, Yi Lang cursed fiercely, releasing the girl she was supporting, turning around with a gun and charging towards Lu Jing behind. Gu Fan in front shouted, Night Wolf, come back. And he also let go of the girl he was supporting, carrying a knife and running frantically backwards. Hundreds of snakes were only two meters away from Lu Jing in the blink of an eye, while Yi Lang was at least ten meters away. As Lu Jing was about to die tragically, everyone held their breath this article is read by the novel. Chapter 7 The Mysterious Power, 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 the mysterious power Yi Lang used all his strength to kick his legs, but still couldn't reach the whip. Everyone watched in despair as the hundreds of snakes vomited black and disgusting snake letters towards Lu Jing's face. Lu Jing screamed in despair and fear, crawling non stop on the ground. Unfortunately, her body was too fat, and with her current strength, she couldn't escape the attacks of these snakes. At this moment, the snake letters of the strange snakes were just within reach of Lu Jing. Even Yi Lang, who was five meters away, gave up the rescue. Suddenly, everyone's eyes lit up, and Lu Jing, who was lying on the ground, miraculously flew up. No, to be precise, she was lifted up by an inexplicable force and left the ground two to three meters in the blink of an eye. The soaring movement was very strange, completely relying on inexplicable external forces. Sure enough, even Lu Jing himself was scared and screamed. Hundreds of strange snakes coiled their heads, spitting out snake letters, constantly spinning below, as if waiting for Lu Jing to fall. Lu Jing was pulled higher and higher by this strange force, and at this moment, she was fifty meters above the ground. Lu Jing, who was stepping on the void, screamed in fear and kept shaking her limbs, as if she had been lifted up and swayed stiffly in the air, looking eerie. The girls behind her also leaned towards Yi Lang, looking at Lu Jing in surprise. Gu Fan couldn't help but ask, Night Wolf, you were closest to her just now. Did you see what happened? Yi Lang shook his head and said, Look at her earrings. Upon hearing Yi Lang's words, everyone turned their attention to Lu Jing's pair of silver earrings, which were the size of a wrist. At this moment, these large earrings were not hanging from her earlobes, but instead stood upside down abnormally, flickering with a little silver light from time to time. It was hard to imagine that Lu Jing might have been lifted by these earrings. Sure enough, the observant Duan Murang had already noticed. It seems that Lu Jing was hung up by her own earrings. Hanged up by her own earrings. Does this pair of earrings have magic? Wen Xiao Dai said incredulously. Magic. Yi Lang lowered his head and muttered, then looked at Gu Fan beside him with a meaningful expression, saying, Did the power that changed our bodies also change Lu Jing's earrings? Yi Lang's words were not imagined out of thin air, after all, that mysterious power could even change their bodies, so it was natural to change Lu Jing's pair of earrings. If that's really the case, can Lu Jing control the earrings? Duan Morong asked. Help, help. Lu Jing shouted in horror from high in the air. Apart from her head being fixed by inexplicable force, her lower body was strangely and dumbfounded in the air. The fastest shake was extremely strange. Suddenly, the group of snakes below turned their heads towards Yi Lang and others. Gu Fan tightened his heavy knife and turned to look at the rapidly dispersing snake group, saying, it seems we can't leave either. Yi Lang straightened his spear and took a big step to protect Duan Mu Rong behind him. In just one breath, the snake pack had already dispersed and gathered, forming a huge encirclement that surrounded Yi Lang and others in three layers and three layers outside. Meanwhile, a group of backward skeletons were also rushing in mechanically. Except for Duan Mu Rong and Wen Xiaodai, two women, 
the other few girls were already scared and trembling all over on the sand. Looking at this formation, Lu Jing in the high altitude also forgot her own situation for a moment. She made a cold sweat for Yi Lang and others. The strange snakes kept swallowing snake letters, emitting a foul smell that made people feel nauseous. The battle began in an instant, and each of the six boys had weapons in their hands. Zhang Lin, who had just left Lu Jing to run to the front, was now helpless and on the periphery. With soft feet and hands, he held the rusty long sword in his hand and slashed wildly, using his brute force to roll up clusters of yellow sand and block the attack of the strange snakes. And Zhou Ning's physical fitness was already good, coupled with his own combativeness and two brushes. At this moment, a rusty big knife in his hand made the strange snake surge out with a cold light, and Yi Lang guarded Zhou Ning's left hand not far away. A long spear was like a poisonous dragon, rolling non dot stop, protecting women such as Duan Mu Rong tightly behind him. At this moment, the skeletons also gathered around. For a while, Yi Lang and others were caught in a fierce battle. Gu Fan, on the left of Yi Lang, shouted, Damn it, what kind of food did these things grow up on? The knives keep cutting. Others had already noticed this situation. Although these snakes were small, they seemed to be impervious to knives and guns. In the recent slaughter, there was not a single snake corpse in the area. The strange snake that was hit by a knife and shot only rolled and quickly jumped up like a slingshot on the sand. More and more strange snakes appeared, and Yi Lang and others began to panic. During this time, several snakes broke through the defense circle of the peripheral boys, but fortunately, there were also three women inside, Duan Mu Rong, Wen Xiaodai, and Dan Bing, who had combat power. As time passed, Zhang Lin and Luo Yu, who were the weakest in strength, both showed a gap. In a moment, hundreds of snakes rushed into the inner circle and directly rushed towards the few girls inside. These strange snakes seemed to have identified the easiest ones to attack inside. As soon as the formation circle was disrupted, four girls were drowned in a group of snakes and died in the blink of an eye. These strange snakes were very organized, with dozens of them, dozens of them, separating Yi Lang and others, leaving them unable to care for themselves. Six boys from Yi Langu were separated, while Duan Mu Rong and Wen Xiao Dai were surrounded by other snake groups, relying solely on Duan Mu Rong, Wen Xiao Dai, and Dan Bing to resist. The other three, including Wang Fang, had no combat power and were in danger. Yi Lang was forced to retreat the farthest by the snake pack, with only Gu Fan getting closer to Duan Murong and a few girls. Seeing that Duan Murong and his three companions couldn't support him for long, Yi Lang waved his gun and shouted, Afen, go save Duan Murong teacher. I know, Gu Fan responded loudly, but the crazy snake pack did not allow him to move half a step forward. And Zhang Lin and Luo Yu, who were separated, also encountered repeated dangers. Suddenly, a snake entangled the sword in Duan Murong's hand and quickly swam up along the sword to bite Duan Murong's tiger's mouth. In shock, Duan Murong had to throw the sword in his hand. Without weapons, the strange snakes rushed forward crazily, and behind him, Wen Xiao Dai and Dan Bing were also caught off guard. Yi Lang's long spear swept angrily and charged forward desperately. Suddenly, a dazzling golden light burst out from Duan Mu Rong's body, as long as three Zhang, like a divine dragon, circling on the sand. For a moment, his energy splattered and his light shone everywhere. The yellow sand filled the sky, and the strange snakes were broken in every inch. The disgusting smell of snake corpses surged everywhere, making people nauseous. Duan Mu Rong was shrouded in this dazzling golden light all over her body. In everyone's surprised eyes, she took a leap and stood at the forefront of that golden light. The golden light was like a divine dragon, carrying Duan Mu Rong soaring into the sky. In the blink of an eye, she rose to a hundred meters high and hovered in the air. However, Duan Mu Rong still stood steadily on top of the light, her long hair flying, and her whole body shimmered with the aura of a golden emperor. Although she was dressed in modern fashion, 
it gave people a majestic and domineering aura that should not appear on women. That flying Xiang's appearance is more than a hundred times more beautiful than the soaring posture of the chubby woman Lu Jing just now. Under the gaze of everyone, the three Zhang long golden light at Duanmarang's feet suddenly lifted her head, like a dragon emerging from the abyss, or as if a dormant power had awakened. The golden sacred light gradually faded away, and at this moment, everyone could see clearly what was under Duanmarang's feet. The interlocking rings were actually the gold necklace that Duanmarang had originally worn on her neck. At this moment, the originally ordinary gold necklace transformed into a divine object measuring three zhang in length, with every twist and twist revealing the state of a divine dragon. What power is awakening on earth? What exactly changed Lu Jing's earrings and Duanmarang's necklace? Does this power only change Lu Jing and Duan Mu Rong? This article is read by the novel. Chapter 8 The Mysterious Power, 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 The Mysterious Power Lu Jing, the chubby woman who first possessed magical powers, had some joy in her eyes besides surprise. She thought to herself, finally, someone like herself suddenly flew up. Sure enough, Duan Mu Rong was held up by the sudden change in the gold necklace around her neck at a height of 100 meters. Although she appeared to be calmer than Lu Jing at the time, her heart was still afraid to death. After all, at such a height, if she accidentally fell, she would die more wrongly than Do Yi. And she, like Lu Jing, knew that there was such a mysterious force helping her, but she didn't know how to use it. She stood still in the air in a daze, while the necklace under her feet occasionally hovered like a divine dragon. Duan Mu Rong's heart was constantly hanging, and she raised it to her throat. Fortunately, the necklace under her feet seemed to have spiritual life, steadily carrying her. Watching Duan Mu Rong have nothing to do, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Suddenly, the snake swarm became restless again, and their attacks were even more fierce than before. Now, there were only four girls left on the ground. Xiao Dai, Dan Bing, Wang Fang, and Zhu Lin. Despite the hard support of Wang Xiaodi and Dan Bing, the snake swarm still broke through their defense line and surged in like a flood. In the group of snakes, the four of Wang Xiao Dai actually flew up, just like Lu Jing and Duan Mu Rong. What made Wang Xiao Dai fly up were all their decorations, and what made her fly up were her bracelets, which were actually three small silver rings. However, there were five small bells hanging on the rings, and as she walked, she would occasionally make a pleasant jingling sound. However, at this moment, the inconspicuous bracelet turned into a large silver object with a diameter of over one meter. Each bell was the size of two fists and emitted a dazzling white light. Meanwhile, when Xiao Dai lay in the inner circle of the bracelet, like a sleeping fairy, holy, elegant, ethereal, and refined. But what made Dan Bing fly was her ring, which was originally an inconspicuous silver ring, but now it has become over a foot wide in diameter. When Dan Bing stepped on the ring, it stood upright and rolled forward, as if the speed of rotation was too fast, making people feel like she was stepping on a silver ball. However, she did not change her position with the rolling, as if she was in the seemingly distance-free gap between her feet and the ring the list hides a mysterious power that keeps Dan Bing steady on the ring. No matter how fast the ring rolls, her own body will not roll with the rolling of the ring. And what made Wang Fang and Zhu Lin fly were both their bracelets, but Wang Fang's bracelet was a gold bracelet, while Zhu Lin's bracelet was a silver bracelet. Both bracelets were attached to their arms. Although their appearance was not as domineering as Duan Mu Rong's necklace, not as sacred as Wen Xiaodie's bracelet, nor as magical as the single ice ring, their bracelets were integrated with their bodies. If they wanted to master this magical power, the two of them should be the fastest. If they were to fly in the air alone, they would be more flexible and free to their will than anyone else, because at this time, bracelets are no longer decorative items, but a part of their bodies. At this moment, all six girls were carried into the air by a mysterious force, and each of them seemed to be immersed in this mysterious force. Even Lu Jing, who was first in the sky, 
stood in the air like a stone sculpture. They seemed to be receiving the baptism of this force, and perhaps they were experiencing some kind of magical mutation. However, the six boys below were still surrounded by a group of snakes, and the girls were in the air. The group of snakes concentrated their strength to attack Yi Lang and his six companions. For a moment, Yi Lang and others felt unprecedented pressure and were almost too busy. Yi Lang used a long gun in his hand to make it look like a flame, covering himself tightly. And in Gu Fan's hand, a large sword was like a wild lion, crazily devouring the attacking strange snakes. However, these snakes were invincible, no matter how Yi Lang and the six of them chopped, they would not die. Zhang Lin and Luo Yu, the two of them, had the worst physical fitness. At this moment, they were sweating profusely and exhausted. The two of them also knew that they couldn't hold on independently for long. They silently approached each other, but fortunately, they were not far away from each other. As a result, they immediately formed a back-dot-to-dot -dot back formation, avoiding the situation of being attacked from both sides, but the situation still didn't improve much. Zhou Ning is not far from Zhang Lin and Luo Yu. This guy seems to have endless strength. At this moment, he quickly approached Zhang Lin and Luo Yu. In just two or three minutes, he miraculously found a way to meet them. With the addition of Zhou Ning, Zhang Lin and Luo Yu had psychological support again, and their strength came involuntarily. In their hearts, they instantly regarded Zhou Ning as a lifesaver. Fortunately, Zhou Ning was sure to buy people on time. After the war, Zhang Lin and Luo Diyu were guaranteed to obey him. And Yi Lang, Gu Fan, and Feng Jun immediately gathered together to resist hundreds of strange snakes. Time passed slowly, but Yi Lang and his team's strength was exhausted quickly. More than ten minutes finally passed, and Yi Lang's sick strength was exhausted. Zhou Ning's side was even more suffering. But at this moment, Zhou Ning was silently eating Huang Lian, unable to express his suffering. His joining almost led most of the attacks onto him. Of course, this was all to bribe and conquer Zhang Lin and Luo Yu in his heart, but he couldn't believe that he was also on the verge of exhaustion now. As this ebbed and flowed, the attack of the snake pack became even more intense and visibly. The defense circle of Zhou Ning and the others was instantly broken through, just when Zhang Lin and Luo Yu thought they were dead. Suddenly, a dazzling white light shot up from within Zhou Ning's body, and a large knife over a meter long snatched its way out of the dazzling light. Zhou Ning leaped up several meters high, and he suddenly grabbed the handle tightly. The dazzling white light on the blade instantly transmitted and fused onto his body. In an instant, Zhou Ning's whole body was shrouded in dazzling white light, standing firmly in the air like a god of war who looked down upon the world. The white light gradually penetrated into Zhou Ning's body, revealing his muscles that were crystal clear and dazzling like diamonds. Each muscle seemed to contain endless power, and he suddenly sank to the ground with a sharp slash from his big knife. Suddenly, a three Zhang long blade was drawn out, and for a moment, cold light shone everywhere, yellow sand rolled, and the airflow surged. The strange snake covered in the light instantly turned into fragments and scattered on the ground, constantly emitting cold air. Zhou Ning's blade contained a cold aura that seemed to come from under the nine yus, as if it was about to freeze the entire desert, unparalleled and domineering. This article is read by the novel. Chapter 9 The Mysterious Power, 3 you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 The mysterious power at first glance, the knife in Zhou Ning's hand was actually the multifunctional knife he carried with him. It was very delicate, with a blade that looked like a literally flying knife. The handle was as long as the blade and had several bends for shaking hands. There were also several additional tools on both sides, such as a small blade, a beer opener, and two small hooks. If this knife were really used in battles, there would be many unexpected attacks from enemies, making it difficult to defend against. Zhou Ning held his big knife high in his hand and laughed wildly, his voice shaking for several miles. He had been watching the magical changes of the girls just now, 
and he had always been jealous. He felt that heaven was too unfair. Why did all the magical powers attach to the girls, and at this moment, this power also appeared on himself, and the joy could be imagined. The strange snakes were forced to turn their heads towards Yilang, Gu Fan, and Feng Jun by the unparalleled cold emanating from Zhou Ning's body. At this moment, Yilang and Feng Jun were already at the end of their strong crossbows. If we add in the hundreds of snakes swimming from Zhou Ning's side, Yilang and Feng Jun would probably die on the spot. And were these strange snakes forced by the cold air emanating from Zhou Ning's body, whether Zhou Ning intended or unintentionally? Only Zhou Ning himself knows in his heart. The strange snakes from both sides meet, for a moment, hundreds carried a strange snake launched a crazy attack on Yilang and his three companions, causing the defense line formed by their horns to immediately collapse. The strange snakes surged in like raging waves. The situation was already at a critical moment, and Zhou Ning, not far away, gave a cold smile. Suddenly, with Gu Fan as the center, all people and things quickly turned black, like a drop of ink dripping into a bowl of calm water, and the black ink quickly spread around. It seems that the current desert is this bowl of calm water, and Gu Fan is that drop of rich ink. At this moment, he is vigorously devouring the things around him, except for Yi Lang and Feng Jun. Wherever the ink went, the yellow sand turned into ink, while the coarse sand particles became small. The originally small sand particles turned into powder, and hundreds of strange snakes were quickly submerged by the ink. In the ink, they lost their vitality and even had no resistance. In an instant, they seemed to have turned into fossils, with countless postures, but could no longer move. When all the strange snakes were engulfed by the sudden ink, the strange ink began to shrink and returned to Gu Fan's right palm, finally transforming into an ordinary black pen. This pen has been following Gu Fan for many years. Gu Fan may not have any other good habits, but he always carries a pen with him. And it is precisely because of his inconspicuous habit, and precisely because of this pen, it has been selected and changed by the mysterious power that exists invisibly. Nowadays, the pen is still a pen, but it is no longer ordinary. What is the power of a bag of ink if a drop of ink inside it can kill hundreds of strange snakes? Moving mountains and filling the sea. Dropping ink into a lake. Or splashing ink into the river. No one knows, and Gu Fan also doesn't know. Watching Gu Fan's pen also be changed, and it seemed even more terrifying than the power of his own knife, Zhou Ning's heart itched with hatred. However, has this intangible mysterious power only changed Gu Fan's pen and Zhou Ning's multifunctional fruit knife? Is there nothing that can be changed in Yilang, Feng Jun, Zhang Lin, and Luo Yu? What unknown things have this inexplicable and magical power changed? When does it awaken? When will it erupt? This article is read by the novel. Chapter 10 Buying People's Hearts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Buying People's Hearts Everything just happened in just over 10 seconds. Zhang Lin and Luo Yu Two timid ghosts were so scared that they closed their eyes just now. But after waiting for a long time, they didn't wait for the terrifying pain of being penetrated by dozens of snakes in their minds. They hesitated and opened their eyes, only to see that there were no more snakes around them, only many ice cubes were constantly shivering, and Zhou Ning stood in front with a silver knife in his hand, full of arrogance. When the two of them looked at Yi Lang San not far away, what was even more terrifying was that hundreds of strange snakes surrounding Yi Lang San had turned into black sculptures and remained motionless on the sand. However, in the high air, the six girls, Duan Marang, still had their own postures, standing or lying in the air, and the atmosphere of the entire scene became eerie. Zhang Lin and Luo Yu looked at each other, but neither of them understood anything. They only saw each other's surprised expressions. All right, it's okay. Zhou Ning turned around and said. Zhang Lin looked around and asked with a flickering gaze, what's going on? Brother Ning. Wow, I changed my tune immediately. Hee <laughs> hee. 
Zhou Ning smiled heartily and seemed to be greatly benefited by Zhang Lin's brother Ning. I've killed all these monsters. Did you do it? Brother Ning, did you do it alone? Just for a while. Luo Yu also followed and called out, Brother Ning, curious and surprised. Zhou Ning chuckled and raised the knife in his hand, saying, Now that I am also a person with divine power, that mysterious power has changed my multifunctional knife. Really, Brother Ning, then we'll have to rely on your care in the future, Zhang Lin and Luo Yu immediately flattered and said. At the same time, both of them were very angry. Why did that mysterious force only change Zhou Ning, not themselves? Zhou Ning immediately put on a bold and straightforward look and said, We are all brothers, supporting each other. It's hard to say who cares for whom. Zhang Lin and his companions immediately nodded and said, Yes, yes, we listen to Brother Ning. Ha ha ha. Zhou Ning burst out laughing, Let's go and see the three of them. On Yi Lang's side, Feng Jun was also grateful for his life and exclaimed in surprise, Wow, Afen, your pen has also been changed by a mysterious force. It's unbelievable. Gu Fan looked at the black pen in his hand. No matter how small it was, he couldn't tell that it had such a powerful force, and he couldn't believe it himself. Yi Lang smiled and said, Fortunately, we have your pen, otherwise we would have become dead now. Then, he looked up at Duan Mu Rong and the others in the sky ahead and said, Duan Mu teacher and their jewelry has also been changed. Girl, but unlike you who can directly use this mysterious power. Gu Fan shook his head and said, To be honest, I don't fully know how to use this power yet. Isn't it, you? Feng Jun was feeling depressed. Gu Fan only gave a bitter smile. At this moment, Zhou Ning walked over with Zhang Lin and Luo Yu, and Zhou Ning asked first, Are you all okay? It's okay, are you okay too? Yi Lang represented Gu Fan, Feng Jun said. Zhou Ning shrugged and said freehand, It's okay, let's take a look at teacher Duan Mu and the others. At this moment, Duan Mu Rong and her companions in the high altitude had regained consciousness, and they all controlled their altered jewelry to slowly fall down. When they landed on the ground, these jewelry automatically reverted back to their original shape. Yi Lang was the first to greet him and asked, Teacher, are you okay? Duan Murong smiled and shook her head, feeling a lingering fear as she said, Fortunately, that mysterious force suddenly appeared. Otherwise, we would all have died tragically. Are you all okay? Gu Fan said, We're fine too. The chubby woman said quietly and in surprise, Oh, why aren't these strange snakes moving? Ha, huh, they have all been frozen by Gu Fan's pen, Feng Jun laughed and said. Pen. Frozen. Has Gu Fan's pen also been changed? Wen Shaodai asked. Not only that, Zhou Ning's knife has also been changed, but unfortunately I didn't get anything. Feng Jun couldn't help feeling a bit disappointed as he spoke, but then he let go. Fortunately, Yi Lang, like me, has nothing, otherwise my heart would be really unbalanced. This person has always been a reasonable person. In school and dormitories, he never competes with others, let alone any scheming. Rodiu and I haven't had anything yet, Zhang Lin said, feeling like a deflated ball, with a face full of awkward words. Duan Mu Rong immediately said, Even if we have this mysterious power, we are not proficient in using it now. Moreover, it is still unclear whether this is a blessing or a curse. There are only twelve of us left among the more than thirty people. The top priority is to find a way to leave this ghost place as soon as possible. Listening to Duan Mu Rong's words, Yi Lang and others were deeply moved, watching their classmates die tragically. Some people said that the relationship between classmates is the most memorable. A person may not say many things to their parents and family, but they will say to their classmates who have been with them for several years. Watching their classmates die tragically is like losing loved ones. More than ten people fell silent for a while, perhaps all of them silently mourned for their deceased classmates, praying that their souls could leave this haunted place and return to their hometowns. Another gust of hot wind struck, 
and hundreds of dark black strange snakes trapped by inexplicable forces on the sandy land instantly turned into yellow sand, and with the hot wind, they transformed into a part of the desert. Dust returns to dust, soil returns to soil. The howling hot wind, the sweeping yellow sand, and the scorching sun all remind Yi Lang and others to muster up their spirits to face the cruelty of reality and the fear of the future. Duan Mu Rong resumed her leadership role as a teacher and organized, saying, Classmates, I don't think I need to explain where we are now. Perhaps there are still many unknown terrorist forces waiting for us. We must leave here. Now, all six of us women have received mysterious help, while only Gu Fan and Zhou Ning have the ability to cross the desert. We must unite and support each other in order to get out of this desert. As soon as Duan Mu Rong finished speaking, Zhou Ning immediately summoned his multifunctional knife. This ordinary multifunctional knife was now a protective weapon, emitting a chilling chill on his spine. Zhou Ning removed the two small blades on either side of the handle, but even so, these two long blades still had a constant chill. After they separated from the handle, they miraculously formed a main body, leaving Yi Lang and others amazed. Even so, these two small blades were still over a foot long, similar to a short knife. Zhou Ning handed them to Zhang Lin and Luo Yu respectively, saying, Teacher Duanmu, each of you women has your own strength. My knife is responsible for protecting Zhang Lin and Luo Yu. Upon hearing this, Zhang Lin and his companions were so overjoyed that they almost couldn't jump up. They eagerly held the small knife in their hands, and suddenly a cold current burst out from the blade, piercing into their bodies. The two of them couldn't help but shiver with excitement. In an instant, they melted into one with the small knife in their own hands. Although these two small knives are two branches of Zhou Ning's sword, they both possess magical powers. Although it is not possible to say that they can save their lives in this desert, they will never sit idly by like they did just now. While Zhang Lin and Luo Yu were excited, they quickly nodded and bowed, saying, Thank you very much, Brother Ning. Thank you very much, Brother Ning. Zhou Ning immediately pretended to be generous and said, What's wrong with this? We are both classmates and brothers, we should, we should. The two small blades made the two of them obedient to him. His multifunctional knife still has at least seven or eight additional abilities. However, even if he loses these two blades, the impact is not significant. However, he traded inconspicuous things for two dedicated subordinates. Why not do it? This article is read by the novel.